it's one of those things where normally I can get this very fast. After a couple of transmissions, your speed will get there. Um, and tonight, if you want to, if you're, if you're getting this stuff done really quick, and you're in a group where someone else did it, well, just grab the screwdriver, pull the snap ring out, put it back in. Start to get a feel of how this works. And as always, I go in there, twist a little bit, and you should be able to get it out. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna flip it over right there. Pull my clutches out. You'll see the, the first one to come out is my thickest one, so this one was reassembled correctly. And I'm looking at the clutches as they come out. They look pretty healthy. Um, something you might notice also is these clutches have no grooves in them. They're very smooth. These ones have a bunch of grooves cut into them. And uh, that's going to affect how things shift. If I have no grooves, it smooths out the shifts and makes it take a little longer. Think about it like tires. If I have no tread left and I go up on the water, what happens? You hydroplane. Glide on it, right? I can't get the fluid out. Well, if I've got tread on my tires and I, I hit water or something like that, where's the water go? Going through the treads. Right? In the grooves and out. So this one, smooth engagement. Well, it's first gear, right? When I go from um, neutral or, or park to drive, I want a smooth engagement. But if I'm going into third gear, I don't want it to take forever. I don't want two and a half seconds to go by, because then it's going to feel like the clutch is slipping. So you'll see some variations in the clutches like that. Um, when you start putting in different clutches, more high performance clutches, a lot of times you'll see different designs cutting this, so they'll get through the fluid and engage quicker. But that's what you're seeing. Okay, so that's out. Now I need to deal with this piece. There's a lot of different snap uh, ring compre or compressors like this. Um, some of them are specific to transmissions. I like this one because it's highly adjustable, works on just about everything, has a good lock on it. Um, some of the other ones are a little slippier, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to adjust this thing to whatever height we need. This is going to go right in here, turn sideways, hopefully more of you guys can see this. And I'm going to take these two pieces right here, set it right on the edge of this little kind of copper looking uh, ring here. Too far in, I won't be able to get my snap ring out. Too far out, it pops off, and I get surprises that I really, really didn't want. So we want to be careful that we kind of set things up just right. Take some time with this tool and see where we're at here. How many of these tools do we have? I've got one for every bench. The, um, so when I look at this thing, the first problem I have is you can see I have a bit of a down angle to it, which means as I compress it, this is going to go more on the other side. So I think I'm going to adjust this one just a little bit. And it looks like the teeth are offset this way, so I'm going to move the drum over a little bit that way. I think I'm going to give it a shot on this one. If I don't like the way it compresses, I'll pull this out, adjust this side down, until I like the way this thing is set up. Keep in mind, if I don't do a very good job of setting this up, things can come out and fly around, and we'll see how good your reaction time is. Here. Also, I've got an unusual kind of snap ring. I found three of my snap ring pliers. I'll go try and find the rest of them. But these ones do not have the pin sticking out. That's not this type of snap ring we're dealing with. This one has got a couple of flat edges on it, so what we have to do is get into those flat edges and simply spread this snap ring out to get it out of here. Um, same thing, try not to spread this thing too much because you'll damage the snap ring and then I'm gonna have to try and stretch it back in. But first things first, let's see if I can compress it. Now we only want to compress just enough to get my snap ring out. The reason behind that isn't because I'm going to hurt the spring. You're not going to hurt that thing at all. But the more I compress this, the more tension the spring has. If something pops off, the more harshly it's going to come apart. So I'm going to try and see what I can get out of this guy. Yeah, I'm going to stop there and see what I got. Now you'll notice I'm not pulling the trigger here. This trigger undoes the lock. So right now, the only thing holding the spring down is this guy inside that little tube. So you don't squeeze this while somebody's working on it. And if this thing looks chewed up, I do replace these once in a while. Let me know. We'll put a different one in or I'll put a fresh grind on it. Now the challenge is getting that snap ring out. Now when I put this drum in here, I took an extra moment to look at it so that the ends are sticking out in this area. You can imagine if the ends were in here, what's it like to dig it out? 
probably not going to do it, and you run the risk of knocking one of these arms off. So I put it all the way out here. This one will work. Let me see what else I got for options in here. It's kind of missing my spring. But so what I'm going to do is this thing actually has a couple little dimples in it. And so the sharp edges, I'm going to get those on there and see if this will open it enough to get it out. Same thing, I'm going to open this up just enough to get it out of there. It's kind of like piston rings. Anyone been to the engine class yet? Mm -hmm. Seen what happens when somebody spreads a piston ring too far? I don't know if those engines ever make one semester where somebody doesn't shatter one into bits. Yeah. It's uh, not your group though, right? Never. It's the group next to you. Yeah, I have those guys. Where's Matt? I, I there he is. <laughs> so some of you know what I'm talking about. Treat it like a piston ring, if you're familiar with that class, just enough to clear. Otherwise, this won't go back on. This does not come with a rebuild kit. If you damage or overstretch one of these, that means you got to go back to the parts uh, window and say, hey, you know what, I need a snap ring or an inner snap ring for uh, the, the front clutch on this. They probably won't have that in stock. They don't stock things that aren't supposed to wear out and break out. Mm -hmm. So that means they're going to be like, well, you know, we can have one on Thursday for you in two days. Now you got a transmission on your bench because you got your snap ring pliers on there and just went, yeehaw, let's squeeze this all away. So be very careful and mindful yeehaw. of that. Uh, you work with the guys I used to work with. They were <laughs> good mechanics, but holy smokes. Don't they have like part numbers for it though? They do, um, but and what ends up happening is the, so at a regular parts place, it's not really, really good. You know, they have the parts that fit the car, but you're at a manufacturer, a dealer, they can give you an exploded view of it with all the little arrows and part numbers, and you just tell mm -hmm. them, I need that one, brings up the part number, all the revisions show up. Uh, so it's really okay. easy there. If I was to go to, say, AutoZone and say, I need that snap ring, I'd get this blank stare, you might push some buttons on the computer and go, oh, looks like we can't get that, even though he's just, you know, playing Frogger or something. I'm just going back there. <laughs> um, that stuff is not readily available unless you're at a dealer. Or uh, a site that I was going to show you tonight, I just knew things were going to run late, so I might do this uh, on Thursday. Wednesday. Or Wednesday. Yeah. yeah, this is a Wednesday class. I'll figure it out by the end of the semester. Um, there is, and we're, we're fortunate to have this because most people don't have access to it, but there is a transmission parts um, store near us. It's actually just over in uh, Concord, but they have just about everything. You need a rebuild kit, they have it in stock. You need a random solenoid for a 20-year-old Toyota, they got it in stock. Um, and my experience so far is the guys behind the counter, they know what they're talking about. They've been doing this long enough. You show up and say, hey, I need this part. They're going to look at you and go, you know, that's probably not it. You probably need this piece. We told you you needed that. Well, the internet, you know, whatever it is. And they've, they've actually been able to redirect this towards stuff. Um, so at this point, I have no snap ring stopping this thing from wanting to come apart. So that's why I don't lean over the top of it or look too close to it, kind of standing back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to release the pressure on it. And what I have to do is compress ever so slightly so the tooth will free up. While pushing down the trigger, it'll pull the tooth up. And then I can bring this thing up. Now here's what I want you to focus on when you lift this thing back up. I just took a snap ring out, so there's a groove there that this little plate right here is going to want to catch on. So if you're coming up and you see that plate catch on there, squeeze back down and this thing rocks, kind of wiggle it around, because if it catches on there and you lift this tool off of it, well now it's just spring loaded holding a ledge waiting for a chance to jump out. So just take a minute when you come back up, make sure, there we go, it doesn't catch. Ah, oh, spring. Yeah, it has some tension on it. There's a spring in there. Okay, so now I can take the spring out. And this, unlike this guy, which just kind of squishes flat, that's got some power to it. And that's simply so as soon as I disengage that clutch, it's going to squish the piston back down as quick as it can. All right, so I'm going to take this guy Flip it upside down with the ring, keep it there. And now all I have to do is get my next piston out. Same thing, if you got gloves, that's fine, but you're gonna find this works better with bare hands. You're gonna grab this guy and just pull up on it. And you're gonna find seals, but they're gonna be in two different places. This one, the seal is out here. There we go. The other seal is in there. It's 
one's a little bit trickier to get to. Um, and typically what I do is we can check out a pit and then very carefully pull it out. Now normally we pull the seal out and throw it away. We're reusing this one. So um, if you check out a pit to grab the seal, try to be very careful not to tear it. So just be a little gentle with it. Although the nice thing is if you're rebuilding it, you can just rip it out of there and throw it away. It's going to be But we need to get that seal out, this seal off, that piston out. And this one you can see a change. There's that little hole in that check ball that I was talking about. It's not in the piston this time. Where is it? In the drum, right? Doesn't matter where it is, it just needs to be there to purge the fluid off of it. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do is you'll tear it down all the way this far, get your last seal out, and when your last seal is out, um, we'll finish up your first page. I'll get to your next one. There's probably going to be enough time to maybe do one more step, and that's it. We're getting really close to that um, 8 o'clock start the cleanup bit. Okay, so you're going to find a whole bunch of these in there. Go ahead and grab one. Um, we'll find a few more snap ring pliers, but there's a couple to start with.